Welcome to From Basra with Love, the hottest new podcast, Hotness. the funniest damn stories, Hilarious. with your host, David Forday. Get ready to laugh, get ready to cry, but get ready, because this, this is From Basra with Love. Hey everybody and welcome to the show. My name is Dave Forday and this is From Basra with Love. And on today's show, I am joined by a very special guest and friend of mine, John Capito from Belmont Music Studio is here to talk a little about what he's got going on in the studio. Uh, John, thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. You've got a great studio out in Belmont Shore, and that's what you're here today to talk about. So I guess my first question is, when did you start playing music? Well, so I started playing music in middle school. I was really inspired from my family, um, specifically my grandfather, Larrick McDowell, his wife, Judy McDowell, and their son, uh, Dorian McDowell, and uh, all of their musician friends. Very hippie-esque, very bohemian lifestyle. They live in Sonoma in Northern California. And so they would always have groups together. In fact, at one point, I remember they had a yurt. If anybody knows what a yurt is, it's not a lot of people do. It's like a Mongolian hut. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would have like djembe drums and um, just musical instruments in there. Um, it's like a, you could imagine a big circular open room mm -hmm. and they would sit around the circle and play music in that specific room. And they um, specifically Judy would have her girlfriends and they would all sing. Um, and it was just really inspiring. So at a very young age, I was fortunate to have this live music uh, culture and I just got heavily inspired and wanted to do it as well. Now, aside from the yurt, they would have their um, jam sessions inside as well. So my grandfather, Lyric played Hammond B3 mm -hmm. and Dorian played drums. And so they would always have their friends over. Mm -hmm. um, several musicians would always come over and jam with them. Mm -hmm. And so I heard them playing and I was just struck by it. Um, mm -hmm. It was just really interesting and just, it was just a beautiful thing. And so I uh, strived to get to that level too. I tried to learn anything I could from him and he mm -hmm. was teaching me how to play music. Um, I'm very fortunate at a young age to have learned a lot from him. Mm -hmm. And um, later in life, actually, I kept, you know, kept pursuing it and actually invited him to a couple of recording sessions mm. um, that you could find under the name Belmont Blues Kings. Um, yeah, I think you could find a, a couple albums on Bandcamp. Mm -hmm. And so he's on Hammond B3 along with um, several of my friends playing. So for all of our viewers at home, can you explain what a Hammond B3 is? And by the way, did you say that your grandpa's name was Lyric? <laughs> His name is Lyric, which is very Irish. Yeah. Lyric McDowell. Okay. Uh, my mom's name is Gina McDowell. And then, yeah, Gina, John, and my brother, Joey. Actually, and Gina and Joey helped me open the studio yeah. uh, back in the day. So. Uh, and then the Hammond. What, what's a Hammond B3? Because not everybody knows what that is. So a Hammond B3 is an organ, mm -hmm. an electric organ. It was made famous in the 1960s uh, for playing um, jazz music mm -hmm. um, and rock music. Mm -hmm. And um, So it's an organ. It's an organ, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Wow, Beautiful you had a lot of influences. Not only did you have family, but you had a lot of different instruments that you got the you know, ability to play. Yeah. That's, like, that's great. Um, so that, that asked one of my questions because it was who's your early influences and I think you just nailed all of them um, let me ask you this when did you decide that you wanted to start a music studio or to, um, teach, to teach music at, at a music studio let's say after I was having success on my own with it so I was kind of um, pounding the pavement and um, teaching on my own which got to be way too much I that's not sustainable because you're driving in between houses. It just wasn't a good um, yeah. business model. Yeah. Um, and then I was teaching at another location um, and um, actually ended up hiring about five of my friends at this location, mm -hmm. um, including Tim Bullock, Sean Emsh, Dallas Howell. And um, we were all teaching there. And um, I did that for several years, I think when I was about 22 years old. Mm -hmm. And then... Wow. Um, Struck out on my own. So early on, 
at tw in your 20s. I mean, you knew it from before that you loved music, but at around 20, you knew that you were going to do the school. Yeah, and I just wanted to share it with everybody. Yeah. Yeah, that was the name of the game from square one. So for anybody that doesn't know, Belmont Shore is a nice suburb, we'll call it, a nice little enclave of Long Beach. Yeah. yeah I, I love it. I live there. Why Belmont Shore of all the places? I actually grew up um, periodically. We moved around a bit, but through Belmont Shore, Sill Beach, um, El Dorado Park, and Long Beach. Um, so I grew up in Belmont Shore, actually playing drums and guitar in a garage in Belmont Shore. And it makes sense. There's a lot mm -hmm. of foot traffic there. There is a lot of foot traffic. That's also true. Yeah. So when you ask somebody, uh, have you heard of Belmont Music Studio? Nine out of ten times, they're like, oh, yeah, the place on 2nd Street uh, above the coffee shop. It's an asset. Yeah. Everything else is a restaurant, a bar, or selling clothing. We've been there for 15 years. That's wow. It's been a minute. Yeah. And in that 15 years, you started uh, with one location, which is still the same location, but you've expanded, right? Yeah. So we started, um, we actually started in um, uh, um, Belmont Heights, it's called, on Broadway. Mm. And then we... Um, got the second location on 2nd Street and then moved fully to 2nd Street. Mm -hmm. And we really started with just half the top story. Mm -hmm. And um, we just needed more space as we were growing and having more teachers and having more students. And so we expanded mm -hmm. into the whole top uh, second half. Yeah. And so for anybody that's going uh, on 2nd Street, it's actually next to Simsy's and it's right above the coffee shop that's there. Right. Yeah. So with all the foot traffic, do people still come upstairs and say, hey, you want to peek their head in and find out yeah, what's going on? all the time. Love that. Uh, we have, especially when we were having like bands rehearse and stuff, I get it all the time. Somebody will come upstairs, hey, I just heard the music. I wanted to see what you guys were all about. Yeah. Um, and these musicians are great. I, we had a band practicing last night even. Um, they sounded great. Yep. Um, and it does draw people in off the streets. And I think the bands in turn are... Um, equally supportive um, even last night they said i'm more than happy to play and if you want to snap some photos or video footage um we're happy to support your business that's amazing which is nice what what would you say what lessons have you learned along the way doing all of this the biggest lesson i've learned is that everybody is an individual and everyone's unique and mm -hmm. so i've uh, been learning to cater to their strengths mm -hmm. and um and so, so for example, I teach 40 students a week personally, wow. and each one of them you say is personally, pers per just by myself, 40 wow. a week. Um, and it's, amazing. it's great. And, um, I'm enjoying it, but what I'm saying is every student is different and unique. So it, which is actually really fun as a musician. So mm -hmm. I get to do, it's like 40 different projects. Everybody's doing their own thing. Yeah. And it's just, um, for me, I'm having a blast. And so in 15 years, you've actually seen kids grow up. Yeah, that's true. And some of them go on to pursue music. They say they've gone on to orchestras or studied music in college. And um, it's really awesome to see or they're recording music or they've even made a um, name for themselves in the music industry. Um, I've heard that a few times. And if they haven't done music um, in life or like if they're not pursuing music, I really do think that having them take music lessons at the studio has really helped their lives. So I'm um, because it makes them more, more well-rounded. Well-rounded, and I think it's just having a good person to collaborate with when you're coming to the studio. You know, you, I really feel like a mentor sometimes and just a good person to just be a good role model. You know, I, yes. I think it's important. I know it was for me when I was a, a young kid. I was taking art lessons, and that really made a big impact as well, yep. as well as my grandfather, too, made mm -hmm. a big impact. Lyric. So, lyric. I'm going to call yeah. him Lyric. <laughs> like a lyric. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. I think it's perfect, honestly. Yeah. Um, wow, man, that's insane. So, all right, let's talk a little bit about your uh, expansion of this. Obviously, it has to do with, you know, you're getting more students, you're getting more. You, how many instructors do you have now? So we have 15 instructors. Um, I just hired a new instructor um, yesterday, and I'm really happy with the new hire. Um, what's, what's his name? His name's John. John, yeah. just like yours. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and then we're actually still looking for a drum instructor. Um, we are hiring all the time, so feel free to bring in a resume or email us a resume. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing about that I love about your studio is because people can just pop in and say, "Hey, how's it going?" 
right? That's the setting you get yeah. with musicians. It's, there's, yeah. a, there's a very welcoming thing that's happening. I think people are encouraging each other. It's very welcoming, you know, and it's a good ambiance. You know, when you're there, you're encouraged to, to play. It's a house full of music, basically. So whenever you have that many rooms being used at the same time, it, um, it's really inviting, you know, mm -hmm. so it makes you want to play, too. When you hear another musician playing, it makes you want to play, too. Yeah, um, that's awesome. We had a comedian in here yesterday, and uh, sometimes in the comedic world, people kind of stick to themselves because they're maybe a little bit more concerned about competition and things, but it seems like collaboratively, you guys like to help each other work towards the same maybe goal. I would say so. Yeah, we're in definitely that environment in the school environment. We're definitely goal oriented. Um, for example, we have recitals that we're doing. Our next one's June tenth at the Long Beach uh, State University. Oh, at the concert, one of the concert halls there. And um, yeah, let's we're talk, gearing towards those goals. Let's talk about that. So June tenth, people can come and see the Belmont Music Studio performing at the Long Beach State University. Is that the Pyramid? It's by the Pyramid. It's at the. Um, it's uh, where they do their music program over there. It's at one of the choir halls. Okay. Yeah. And so we start at 2.30. We'll go to about 5.30. We've got about 30 students signed up. Okay. A couple of student bands, which is really exciting to see. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I have a, some personal students that are doing it. And everybody pinches in. So it is a big team effort. Um, and we're getting everybody ready and... Um, you know, we, and at the same time, we try not to push either. So if somebody, like, doesn't want to do the recital, they may have, like, um, cold feet, so to say. Mm -hmm, sure. Um, it's all good. I, I definitely, I'm like that with my life, too, with my friends. I normally ask once if they don't want to do it. It's all good. You know, I'm, I have that kind of personality where yeah. I let people be, be themselves. Them. Yeah, you know? you're great at that. Um, you know? And I noticed you're doing more rehearsals. I just, one of my favorite bands just was at your, yeah. your studio. The Vandals were just there recently. Yeah, those are, so my friends, Darren Hastings and Jeff Gilkinson, um, their uncle plays bass in the Vandals. Oh, and Who, um, uh, Joe Escalante? Joe Escalante. No right, way. Right, so Joe, and um, he's a great guy. He's really big in the music industry. I think he owns his own record label, Kung mm. Fu Records. Yeah. And um, he's a lawyer. He's a music business attorney, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, he's really versatile. He's really knowledgeable. So I always like to pick his brain if I ever get the opportunity to. Sure. Um, and it was just honestly, it was an honor having them there. It was a pretty big deal for me. Yeah. One is because um, their music is great. And I was influenced by um, their writing, as quirky as it may be. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's still pretty fun. Kind of reminds me of our old band, the Federales. Yeah. The Vandals and the Federales. And um, um, good times. Yeah, it's really fun. Now, I, can other bands come in there and rehearse? Is that uh, yeah. something you're offering? All the time. You know, I feel like it's ramping up through the years. When we started the business, I had no intention of having it as a rehearsal hall because I think of a rehearsal hall as a separate business in itself. Mm -hmm. So I used to go to rehearsal halls all the time. Yeah. to rehearse, you right. know, and it's a business. Um, so it didn't really occur to me that we could be teaching lessons and then if bands want to come practice, um, that's totally okay. Um, you know, uh, we do have our own student bands that are taking lessons with an instructor mm -hmm. and we help them. We, in fact, we were having a, a student band practice uh, yesterday mm -hmm. along with a um, uh, some customers that were coming in to have their own band practice. You guys are very hands-on. So, you know, you come to the studio, you're there with somebody. My question becomes, what about during COVID? How would you guys be able to make that work? Were you guys doing Zoom or? So we used Zoom. Um, one of my students uh, named Jim Stutz uh, was writing, we practically wrote a whole album on Zoom, which was actually, it was different. Oh. So for that, I liked it, which, was fun because it was something different. You know, I, I like having the challenge. Yeah. So when we were doing Zoom through uh, COVID, mm -hmm. and we were both doing our parts, I think what we would do, our technique was I would listen to him, and if he had an idea for a melody, mm -hmm. I would listen very carefully, and he would maybe have to sing it a few times, and then I would see how I could accompany from a distance, making a chord progression to the melody that he may have um, an idea for. And so we would arrange um, from a distance, um, and it was it was fun. It worked really well. We practically had a whole album 
Yeah. Which we didn't release, but we just kept doing song after song after song. Yep. Um, through Zoom and everybody else did their Zoom lessons as well. I don't, um, the one drawback with Zoom is for the young kids. Mm -hmm. I think the parents were having a difficult time keeping their kids engaged. Yeah. Um, because it's more like a, I think a game for that young age. They see a screen and they're just like, they think it's a cartoon or something. Sure. You know, it's hard to keep their focus. Yeah. When you're hands on, you got, I couldn't imagine trying to learn how to play the piano unless somebody was there like to go, okay, you got to keep staying at it. For a young age, honestly, it's best to be in person because it is literally hand holding. Yes. You know, if you're a guitar, piano, I, I have to put their fingers in position, mm -hmm. um, put their hands in a certain position. Right. Um, so it's really important to be literally hands on. Yes. Yeah. Now, do you ever get kids in there that, because I feel like parents a lot of times are trying to find uh, something for their kids to do in an earlier age and like maybe playing soccer and doing all of the sports that come along with when you're raising kids. You ever get kids that come in there like, I just don't want to be here. Like, you ever have that? Honestly, we, we have, but it doesn't happen tremendously a lot. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I know about that. I'm reminding of my, I had a neighbor friend when I was growing up who his mom forced him to take piano lessons. Yeah. And this kid just threw the biggest deals uh to not do these piano lessons when he was little but his his older sister was quite good at it actually but you know i i don't have cases like that at the studio a lot it's surprising people want to be there yeah people want to be there not um, just their parents the kids want to come too and learn this stuff. you know what i try to do as an instructor i, I kind of take note if i kind of have a hunch that they may not be as into it i just honestly just make it really fun and so in turn through the course of several months pass by we're just having as much fun as we can. Mm -hmm. And I think they learn to really love it. Get and into it. It's a camaraderie it. too. So yeah. you're again, being a good influence and a good role model for these people. And that goes really well. Um, I actually even have a two and a half year old that takes lessons with me and she's kind of on the quiet side, which I could relate to. And um, she comes in and we were, uh, or I was um, singing a few frozen songs for her. And then we do tambourine and counting we sing our ABCs and um, just, again, just try to have a fun uh, experience. Mm -hmm. So in turn, mm -hmm. as the months roll by, um, she'll get more into it as we keep um, moving along. So I'm sorry, did you say that she's two years two old, half, two yeah. and a half years old? Yeah. So wow, so the ages that you are teaching go mm -hmm. from that age to how old can people be to learn? I have a student named D Brown and he's um, also doing songwriting uh, with me and we're having a great time. He's probably up to 30 songs now and he's uh, probably 79 years old. D Brown, shout out to D Brown. Yeah, he's rad. I love D. D's yeah. great. He comes in every week with new material. He's an artist Yeah, in his own right. So he's a visual artist. I see. Um, and he sells his pic um, paintings to galleries and people buy his paintings and whatnot. Um, it's a whole world. I'm not very knowledgeable about it, but he comes in and we songwrite every week and it's just growing. And I kind of remind him from time to time, remember when you started six months ago, or actually at this point, it's probably been about a year mm -hmm. and, um, gosh, he's come a long way. Um, and it's really fun to see the progression. I actually post about him on our Instagram from time to time. How do people find that? On Instagram, it's Belmont Music Studio on Instagram. Oh, cool. Yeah. Just like the name of the company. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Now, did, would, did that spur that name from your earlier band, the Belmont Kings? Oh, the Belmont Blues Kings. So before the pandemic, I had two bands, actually, um, of adult students. Most of them were retired. Yeah. And we had these Friday sessions um, that was actually really fun. We started to get these two bands to the point of they were starting to do gigs here and there around town and um technically they were working musicians for a little while and then literally they played up until the pandemic the pandemic hit mm -hmm. and it just was like a cold turkey thing they we had to stop you yeah know, cold turkey so um that was it um but uh these bands were really fun they would always say this is the highlight of my week i come in on a friday night to rehearse with you guys and it's and it really is you start doing music and it's it's just a great way to uh, escape sometimes reality. Yeah, definitely. I've seen you guys down there uh, on the sidewalk because you're, you're at the second level, but right. I've seen you guys play there in the front. 
Yeah, we do the stroll and saver. So Belmont Shore has a stroll and saver once a month mm-hmm. um, from May until September. And um, and what, what's the stroll and saver? What stroll exactly and is saver that? is people will go down Second Street and all the participating restaurants will offer um, things to eat and people can buy tickets and sample um, good eats up and down the street. And there's, hence the name. Hence the name, Stroll and Saver. Yeah. And then there, the business association will also hire musicians to go up and down the street and perform. Yeah. And so Belmont Music Studio, from time to time, will have our student base um, perform. And so I'll put a sign-up sheet in the lounge, which actually somebody just asked me last night, are you guys going to do the Stroll and Saver? Because we would like to participate. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will probably do a Stroll and Saver on a Thursday. It's actually working out to be a good day for me, so. That's how yeah. I was able to originally find your studio. Through the Stroll and Saver? Through the Stroll and Saver. Nice. Like, this, there's a band here that's playing and they're kids. Yeah. And they're out there and they're not afraid to be out there. They, they're they putting their best foot forward. They could be pretty nerve wracking performing. Sure. Um, I'm always so impressed whenever we do a recital or performance. I'm, that's the biggest thing is I'm super impressed with people just wanting to get up and perform and, um, that alone is a really good for you. you know, get up in front of the public and speak like that is, Definitely. or perform like that is just no. really awesome. Now, do you ever get nervous to play? I know you've been playing for um, a long time since so we were in high school. The way I look at it is like a gymnast um, doing their routine over and over and over. So for me, it's more fun. It's for me, it's more like raising music uh, musical bars. Mm-hmm. So when I'm playing in um, my own band, Cosmic Cowboys or Belmont Blues Kings. Honestly, I'm not really nervous as much as just trying to, for lack of a better word, kick ass at the show. Yeah. Um, like the gymnast, I, I assume like maybe they could have some nerves, but honestly, they should, I would assume, be trying to uh, raise that bar and get the gold. Yeah, I agree. You, know? so you got to be goal oriented to be doing this. You got to push thing. your limits, you know, so that's the way I look at it. You got to really push yourself. How many instruments do you play, John? Um, I play a hand. My main instrument's guitar. Uh-huh. Um, I, I see was, your guitar over there on the... Yeah, my main instrument is guitar. Um, I play, um, ukulele, piano, bass, and, um, a little banjo, a little mandolin, a little harmonica I sing. Yeah, yeah. Little drums. Yeah. Dang, that's yeah. a lot. Yeah. So did you just, you just always had this talent and you just started with one guitar and you're like, I can jump over here to the drums and... No, Something on this. so I was playing in um in a band in high school, in early high school, and um, one of my friends brought their drum set to my house in Belmont Shore, mm-hmm. and I just got on his drum set and started practicing. Again, I was kind of fortunate to have my uncle Dorian McDowell, uh, who was a really good drummer, mm-hmm. and so I kind of heard what he was doing and how he was practicing and was fortunate to have somebody like that in my family so I could kind of pick up and sense what they were doing and imitated it yeah and practiced on my own somebody left their drum set at my house and i started practicing so okay is there anything that you would tell your younger self now that you've gone through all of these things with your expansion of your business and growth that's happened for your for your lessons and um you know the students and, and is there anything you could tell yourself now that you wish you wish you would have knew then or tell yourself you know, tell yourself then that you wish you knew now. Um, just stay true to yourself and um, um, and stay true to everybody else's self too, as an individual, and um, and be good to yourself is really important. Um, so focus on yourself. Yeah, I think that's really important. Definitely. Definitely. Too much. Too often we put too much emphasis in everybody else and, and kind of forget about ourselves sometimes. Yeah. So it's important to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I noticed you brought your guitar. Uh, before we get into that, let's talk about, though, your um, your band, Cosmic Cowboys. You guys have a song coming out? You so have an album coming out? We recorded a song called Jack about two years ago. <clears throat> and we're, at the time, rehearsing weekly and doing an occasional gig here and there. Mm-hmm. And we wrote this song on a Thursday, and we're, what, for whatever reason, we're really inspired. I think we were jamming actually at the studio at the time. I had a Hammond B3 upstairs mm-hmm. um, that my grandfather actually gave to me. And so we had a keyboardist 
um, come in and, um, and, um, uh, we were just rehearsing, wrote the song on a Thursday, booked studio time on a Saturday and went in and did about 11 takes on it. And it's finally, um, being released on, uh, tomorrow actually. So it's not an album. It's a, no. it's a song that you guys yeah. got together. I would did. say it's, um, yeah. Yeah. Single song. Okay. Yeah. And how can they find that other than the YouTube page? Um, Maybe on Spotify? Or? Yeah, definitely on Spotify. Um, Apple Music, I believe. Um, yeah, one of those two. Maybe posting on your yeah. Instagram, I guess? Yeah, I'll definitely um, repost, probably on like social media, mm -hmm. like Facebook or what have you. Or maybe I'll tag it on um, Instagram. Sure. Yeah, yeah, so people can find it. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, uh, you wanted to show some some of your stuff, and you wanted to do, I think you said a little bit of instructional. Yeah, so... I had this idea the other day for writing um, with a kind of a rock perspective, um, and it was a really fun exercise that I've been sharing with students. Um, is this okay to play right let's, where let's, I'm at? Or? Yeah, let's let's get it set up here, but okay. I think it'd be cool to have you uh, show a few things. Is that okay? Yeah, it'd be fun. That's great. Yeah. All right. Okay, so I brought my guitar. Um, this is a classical nylon string guitar. And I wanted to share a little insight to a lesson that has uh, been helping a few of my students at the studio. So some of the students who are maybe interested in rock music and scale work and improvising, uh, this would be a good lesson for you. Um, so I'm going along the E minor scale. E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, and back to E on the 12th fret. Now this exercise you can use um, each chord, you can mix and match the notes. So for example, uh, one of the chords I had was B on the seventh fret, and then the other chord I had was C right next to it. So one thing to do with this would be mix and match the notes. So for example, if you could see my fingers, you can go um, mix the two chords together. see what I'm doing here. So I'm using the one um, chord, a B chord, but I'm also using the other note from the uh, prior chord, the C chord. And you could really find some really creative um, lines to play with this, which I'm gonna demonstrate here in a second. Um, I feel like uh, this exercise uh, can go a really long way and you can think of really limitless ideas uh, using it for riffs and it's pretty cool So hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm kind of using a combination of the note choices for each. Awesome. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> Thanks. Wow. Okay. Very cool. Well, thank you, Johnny, for, for bringing that in. That was amazing, man. Thank you. Very cool. All right. Well, we're going to uh, get into the last part of the show, which uh, is going to be, I'm going to give you, we call them five, five fast words. Okay. And the way this works is, um, you could even do them from right there, in fact. Uh, I'm going to give you five words. Okay. And uh, you're going to tell me the first thing that comes to mind when I give you these words. And so if you're ready, we can jump into that. Yeah. Shoot. All right, so the first word I'm going to give you is 
tempo. Speed. <laughs> Very good. The next one, collaboration. Working with others. <laughs> How about practice? Practice, it depends on what you're practicing. <laughs> um, so you can get very lost with um, playing random stuff, but it's good to have specific material um, or substance to practice. Um, when I was uh, growing up and learning music from my grandfather, he taught me one thing. What's the name of the song? Uh, wh who's the song by? And can you play the song from front to back? And when you ask a guitar player to play you a song, and a lot of them are like deer in headlights. Like, wow. Oh, yeah. I, you know, so playing songs from front to back is a great way to practice. Um, playing people's material if you're practicing for a gig, like the Vandals were, um, really I call that rehearsing, but, you know, even the pros need to rehearse. <coughs> you're preparing you know, for whatever you're preparing for. But, um, yeah. Cool. All right. And then the next one is success. Success. Um, yeah, success. Um, success, I would say, is um, success is maybe different for everybody um everyone's maybe got their own uh thought on what is successful for them um for me success is um helping others i think that would be the biggest success for me and that um goes back to day one i suppose the whole Thing with doing music is uh, something that you're sharing with others um, so that's successful um, and that really still rings true for me today you know getting a group of people together and making a circle um, and playing music together um, it's just what it's all about ha getting people together having a great time um, the spirit of a human uh, nature you know mm -hmm. getting people together and being good to one another um so um that to me is fun getting people together and playing music and um yeah so i think it's successful to share your passion with others and um yeah yeah that's great perfect and then the last one i have for you is new music New music, um, yeah, you know, every um, I'm going to go back to the focusing on yourself kind of thing. So that really gives you an opportunity to find, um, you know, what you like about um, your music. Um, so if you keep kind of focusing on yourself, I think you do start to find your strengths and or weaknesses. Um, with music, uh, let's see. You know, it's one of those things that develops. If you stop to think about every musician, um, everyone has their own thumbprint, you know? So I think it is really important to find yourself. Um, new music, I think um, if you have the capital or the recording equipment to record it, I think that's probably a great idea to get it out there or or produce your music on stage, you know, and portray it live in a live setting. But um, yeah, getting it out there in one way or another is really important for your new music. Um, right now I'm really into like, I feel like um, I relate it to like a drop um, coming down in a swimming pool or something and it splashes and then it just goes all over, you know, the it reverberate, it goes, in a big ring and it keeps going and traveling. So I feel like if I was got thrown into a recording studio, I'd be like a drop and going into the studio and just having it expand all over the place. 
Yeah. It'd be really probably pretty interesting to see what I could come up with because I do a lot of um, instruments and whatnot. And for me, it would be pretty fun. But um, I don't know. I'm just not there yet. I just, um, you know, I know what the um, commitment means and I know what, um, you know, the price tag is, you know. Um, so I just, you know, I'm, I'm personally, I'm happy just working on the music with others and teaching and having a good time at the studio. And, um, but yeah, I would like to put out some new music one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, guys, that's John Capito from Belmont Music Studio. You can find him at Belmont Music Studio on Instagram or Facebook, or just stop by his, uh, location, which is there on 2nd Street next to Simsy's above the coffee shop. Say hello to him. And uh, we are very happy to have you on the show. Uh, if uh, you want, smash that like button, uh, subscribe, and check us out on YouTube. We're putting out new videos every week. Uh, so, John Capito, thank you for being on the show, man. Yeah, this that. is a blast. Thank you so much for having me, Dave. Thank you. Yeah.